Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about the basic difference between a conventional IVF and ICSI. So whenever you hear the term IVF that you are going for a you know IVF cycle or you've heard somebody who's undergoing IVF, um, let's begin with that IVF is a very broad term and there are basically two techniques within it which help you attain um, parenthood. So one is uh, what is known as the conventional IVF and the other is what is known as ICSI. So IVF is a broad term, conventional IVF and ICSI. ICSI stands for intracytoplasmic sperm injection but world over uh, people call it ICSI so that's a very acceptable term. Conventional IVF, so now I will highlight the difference between conventional IVF and ICSI. So let's begin with what is IVF which here I mean conventional IVF. So IVF or conventional IVF is something uh, which was uh, the first thing or the first baby was developed from. So that is a more natural thing wherein if this is your petri dish and there, is, there are oocytes in it that is there are eggs in it we just calculate the amount of sperm required and we put that in the dish these are the sperms we put that in the dish along with the eggs this is more how a natural conception happens the better the uh, sperm or the egg naturally selects the sperm for fertilization so when we come in the next day we can see how many eggs have been activated so this depends on the quality of the sperm and oocytes in this technique we don't get a lot of information because whatever eggs are retrieved we just overlay it with a quantity of sperms now ICSI is something which is more widely used and here what happens is that say you have 10 eggs retrieved okay in IVF, what you did is you just took these 10 eggs without checking for their maturity and uh, put them with the sperms. In ICSI, what happens is that all these eggs have a protective uh, layer of cells known as corona. This is the egg. So we strip, the, we strip these eggs from the corona. So then what we see is something like this. I'm just going to draw all the three variants that we end up seeing and this okay this and that so this is something known as m2 gv and m1 so when we strip this layer of the egg uh, you see something as naked eggs so there is no corona cells anymore we do this with an enzyme and then uh, we see these three type of eggs wherein m2 is the only one which is usable where which is differentiated with this thing known as the polar body gv does not have a polar body and neither does m1 these are discarded at the same time we don't use these so these m2 what happens is under a machine which we call as the micro manipulator each egg is held with a very tiny needle which cannot be seen with naked eye under the microscope and here each sperm like one sperm is selected from the millions that are available and it is injected one by one into the oocyte so basically one egg one sperm so you know say like if i had eight m2 and i had uh, one and one m1 i have eight x2 inject so I will take all these eight eggs and I will start injecting it with the uh, sperm. So uh, this is what is ICSI. So I hope uh, the basic difference is clear that in an IVF, we do not strip them of the layer. We just directly put so we don't even know the number which is mature. And uh, here we do not have any role in selecting the sperm. Whereas in ICSI, I can manually search for a good sperm and then inject one sperm in one egg. Um, so the basic difference is that here in IVF, this is a very natural way 
of conception. I mean, it's literally how it happens in our bodies. And there are some um, countries in the world which advocate IVF uh, majorly. Um, in India, however, ICSI is more preferred. Uh, there are various reasons. So I'll just go one on one. Uh, the first one is that the fertilization rate is, a sli is slightly higher in ICSI. So what that means is that once I put the sperm in the egg, the activation that we see the next day is a little higher in ICSI as opposed to uh, IVF. Second is that uh, here in IVF, you need the sperm count and motility to, be, motility to be very good for the sperms to be able to penetrate the egg. Here in ICSI, even if it's a male factor. So what I mean is that, you know, if the sperm count or motility is low, we can still work with ICSI and it gives us good results. Third advantage of ICSI is that, like I said, here we are directly putting the eggs without stripping them of this layer of cells. So we don't know a lot about the egg. You know, does it have vacuoles? Does it have any other abnormality? Whereas in ICSI, uh, we, we not only know the maturity of the eggs, but also the quality. So it works very well in unexplained cases of infertility. Now you may ask me that if ICSI has so many advantages, why do some countries still want to go ahead with this conventional IVF? The reason is that in India, uh, ICSI or any fertility treatment is not funded by the government. So the patients want to maximize their chances in their first go, in the first uh, cycle itself. So for that reason, uh, ICSI definitely helps you maximize your chances because the fertilization rate, like I said, is higher. Um, you can rule out male factor in the first time and even with unexplained. What happens with conventional is that there is a lot of trial and error. So they may start with IVF, but they move on uh, with uh, ICSI later. So because insurance uh, and the money involved in your fertility treatment is not covered, uh, especially in India, a lot of people prefer ICSI. And we get this question asked a lot of times that is ICSI safe? Yes, ICSI is absolutely safe and it's been around for many years. And um, there are a lot of papers and research papers to prove that it's safe. So if you are in a dilemma of whether to choose IVF over ICSI, um, you can reach out to us and maybe we can help you get to that decision a little faster and easier. Thank you for listening. Please get in touch with us if, you, if needed. Thank you.